to live in harmony with the voice of being as I understand it within myself, as soon as I begin, I suddenly discover, to my surprise, I am neither the only one, nor the first, nor the most important one to have set out upon that road. For what is prayer but the expansion of yourself into the living ether? Religion is a kind of a tricky word. <laughs> uh, Jamal said, I don't like religion. <laughs> you know, in a kind of a common sense, religion is something we have to believe, uh, even though it's difficult to believe. Uh, let me talk about what uh, religion in Japanese means. The equivalent Japanese word for religion is shūkyō. Shū literally means uh, basic truth or reality, and kyō is teaching. Originally, shūkyō uh, is a Buddhist word. That means the reality Buddha awakened to, and Buddha's teaching, the basic reality and about the teaching about that reality. That is the definition of what shūkyō means. And this word shūkyō is used as a, as a equivalent of English word religion. And religion means to be connected with God again, right? To recover the connection. So religion and Japanese word shūkyō are two different things. And yet, and yet, you know, we use as an equivalent. That is kind of a problem. When Uchimaro talks about religion, He's thinking about shūkyō, mm -hmm. that is basic reality and teaching about that reality. Importance of religion or shūkyō uh, in these modern times is we need to awake to that fundamental reality in which we are living together with all beings. And how we need to think how we can live without, in a sense, uh, destroying the interconnectedness, or destroying or injured. But we, modern civilization, uh, destroy that or injured the interconnectedness. We don't mind about, you know, some, you know, living beings uh, cease to be uh, if we are happy or to make our life more convenient or uh, materially abundant. Uh, and enjoyable, we don't mind about other living beings. I think that is injuring or even destroying this interconnectedness. So to do so, to uh, awake, that is a problem, or the problem of modern civilization or material civilization. We need uh, to wake up or awaken to that basic reality and try to live that reality. If that is religion, or that if that is shūkyō, then shūkyō is, I think, the most important thing for us modern people. But in that sense, religion is not some kind of uh, doctrine, system of doctrine we have to believe without thinking. It's not an institution. Yeah, awareness or awakening and practice based on that awakening, how we are. It's like that kid, Phil, who comes in and says, I'm now becoming aware that I'm not aware. Something happens. You have an experience of something so different that you say, oh my God, this is something different. This is not quite the same. And that, and that moment of difference is awakening to something else. And there's a peace. There, 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 there seems to be, seems to be with, with these experiences, these deep experiences of deep intimacy or a deep communion. There are usually some universal um, Characteristics. Peace is one of them. Uh, naturally, one becomes disinterested. I mean, you become uh, your ego no longer is very interested in grabbing. It's it's uh, there's a there's a sense of grasp non graspingness that's there. I, I mean, so I only can talk around this 
because it, it's you can't talk about something that, that it's an experience that that when you see it you know it you feel it and it does change I don't know how to say this do you remember this do you remember uh, this came to mind a few years ago the Supreme Court was debating about pornography. And then one of the justices, I believe it was one of the justices, well, it's easy. You know it when you see it. <laughs> it's one of those things like deep listening. How do you know what it is unless you experience what it is? And that's where I think the deep conversations it is something I, I find my students when they come and speak with me they say things like I don't talk like this with anyone else and I'm not sure what that if that's a compliment or a uh, fear because for some to speak that deep or to share the longing is very frightening. And I think the deep silence is too. Because it's a vulnerability there to the point where we have no more moorings of the, of, of the familiar. And boy, do I, as I'm even saying this, I can feel my wanting the familiar to be familiar. It's the battle of the, of wanting to just be in control. And the deep silence and the deep longing and the deep conversation, the deep speaking, ultimately ends up in a silence. A silence. And one author once said, it ends up in a silence, a wordlessness, a thoughtlessness, a consciousnessness and a laughter that we ever had to talk about it to begin with. <laughs> but it is transforming, and I'm finding more people looking for this because they're, they're wanting, they're, they're so much, there's so much pain. Reality is our friend. When we choose to become friends with reality, it changes everything. But we don't have to become friends with reality. But reality always wins. Now sometimes, sometimes every day, if we choose to, we can observe ourselves living in unreality in illusion and make-believe. Now I will tell you that illusion is very seductive and a lot of times feels really good for a short amount of time. But reality always wins. We often hesitate to get ourselves educated about this reality stuff. We recoil, we back off. And we do that for lots of reasons. However, when we choose to practice trusting reality, loving reality, we can, we can go on a journey. And we can go on a journey whereby our capacity to trust and to love reality is enhanced and it changes everything else. And over time, we may become more trusting of that which is really real than we are of our personalities, our ego selves, 
our force of will, even our precious but fragile and temporary bodies. We can even grow to learn to love and trust reality more than any of those other things. Overcome the finite with the infinite.